In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to sit two buttons next to each other inside a Bricks Builder. So this is what we're going to create in today's video. So we have these two buttons there and they're centered within this column that they're inside. But before we jump in, I'm curious, let me know in the comments below if you already know how to do this. And I also wanna know if you understand how Bricks Builder is using Flexbox to achieve this. So again, let me know in the comments below. I'm very curious about this. But jumping in, let's go ahead and recreate these two buttons next to each other. So to create this just so it's a bit easier to follow along we will start with a blank page so let's go ahead and do that so let's go up to pages and then let's click create and I'm just gonna call this two buttons next to each other and we'll go create page and then let's go and edit this page so I'll click there and let's leave this here I don't really need to save that and now we're in here so I'm gonna go ahead and add a section and then in here let's go ahead and add a heading element and maybe some basic text, and then we'll add our two buttons. So I'll search for the button element and we'll add that, and we'll add a second one. And then here, let's just say this is a WooCommerce website. So here, this button could go to on sale, to our sale category, and maybe down here, this goes to latest products. So now let's go ahead and set these buttons side by side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just do it, and then after it's done, I'll go back and go through all the buttons that I clicked and what they actually did. So coming back into here, to set them side by side, we need to put these into the same parent element. So I'm going to right click here and then I'm going to wrap into a block like this. So now this button's inside a block element and then I'm going to drag the second button into here. So now both of these button elements have the same parent element here and then I'll click on the parent element here and I'll go to content and then for the flex direction I'm going to make it a row and then let's go and add some spacing between them. So we'll come down to column gap. We'll do maybe two rem. So now there's some space between there. And if we wanted to center them on the page, we could come here to align main axis and go center. And it's really important to understand at this point in time that everything that I did to move these buttons and add the space here, put them on the same line, all of those changes weren't made on the button elements themselves. They were made on this parent element. And that's why we needed to go ahead and wrap these buttons. If we didn't have them in a parent, so we just did that and we did it again. So these two buttons are outside on their own so that we have the container element and then a heading basic text, and then the buttons are there on the same level as the basic text and the heading. There's no way to go out and sit these buttons next to each other. You need to put them into a parent and then on that parent, add these settings that you saw here. So that's the answer. If that's all that you wanted from this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. For people that actually wanna stick around and understand the underlying CSS that's happening here when we click on these icons and actually understand why clicking on these icons gave us this result we were looking for, stick around because now I'm about to go through all of that. So let's jump in and actually start looking at this. So the first thing is why did we have to go and put these two buttons and wrap them in a block element? The reason that we did that is because we're using the CSS layout system of Flexbox to go out and lay it out. And as I explain how Flexbox works in this next section, you'll get a better understanding of why we needed to create this parent and then have the two children inside of it. So coming back to this block element, which is a parent element, when you go to Bricks Builder and you go and search for the block element and you add a block element into your page, block elements by default uh, display flex. That's just what Bricks Builder does out of the box. So I'll just go ahead and delete that and come back to here. But knowing that this block element for the parent is a display flex by default, we can now go out and lay out the items within it using Flexbox. Now, the main thing to understand with Flexbox is to go out and lay out the items, you actually set those settings on the parent element. So here on the parent element, we said we want the flex direction to be horizontal rows. And what this is basically doing is it's getting all the items inside there, all the children, and putting them on a row next to each other. And it really is worth taking the time to understand what flex direction does. If you go to my YouTube channel and search up here, or you can scroll down a little bit, you can see this video here, Learn Bricks Builder Plus Flexbox in 12 minutes. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description below of the video you're currently watching. I go through all these icons in quite a bit of detail, so it's definitely worth checking that out. But I will give you a rundown now in today's video. So knowing that we click on the parent to lay out the children inside there, and we have the aim of sitting these two buttons next to each other, with the parents selected, we did flex direction of horizontal, and then the children were sat across the row. So what is flex direction? What is that actually doing? When you go out and set a flex direction of row, what that's actually doing is it's setting what Flexbox calls its main axis. 
to be horizontal across the row. So I'll just add that main axis. So if the flex direction is row, it's setting the main axis to be along the row. Now the opposite of the main axis, which in this case is going to be going vertically in CSS is known as the cross axis. So I'll just call that cross axis. And so when you go and set the flex direction for a parent item, you're basically changing the main axis and the cross axis. So here, if we've set the flex direction to be horizontal row, we're setting the main axis to be across the row. But if we were to actually go out and set this to be a column, these axis actually swap. So this would actually become the main axis going vertically. And this one over here becomes the cross axis. And this is just fundamental flex box. If you're not using Bricks Builder and you are writing CSS from scratch and you wanted to do display flex, this is just at the core of CSS and how it works. So coming back to what we're trying to achieve today, we're trying to set these two buttons to sit next to each other, clicked on the parent, set the flex direction to be horizontal, which set the main axis to go across here as a row. And that in turn sat the children next to each other on that row. Now, the reason that I wanted to go through what the main axis is and how swapping the flex direction here changes which um, axis is the main and which one's the cross axis, because we did the flex direction of row and that sets this to be the main axis and this to be the cross axis. If we know this is the main axis here now, but we want to center these buttons in the middle of here, we can come down to here, align main axis, and then we can click center. And now they're centered along the main axis. If we want to put them right at the end for align main axis, we could go down and we could say at end. By default, they're at the start, which is the left. We can come and do space between. We can come and do space around. And we can also do space evenly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just undo that and the default will be start, which again is on the left like we saw. But the final thing that I wanna go through that I think is very important with these two buttons sitting next to each other is how to handle this on a responsive breakpoint, so a mobile version. So as we go through the breakpoints, let's just say we get to uh, the mobile landscape or we could go down to here, mobile portrait. And we say at this breakpoint, we want them to sit under each other and take up the full width of their row. How would we go and do that? So at this breakpoint, with the parents selected, we know that we set their flex direction to be row to sit next to each other. We can just come back here and do column. And by doing that, the parent is getting the children inside it and running them vertically down the column. And the reason that I point that out is this last setting. Here on a mobile version, we wanna make these a full width and we also wanna add some space between here. So to make them full width, it's actually quite simple. So coming back to our little diagram here, if we have flex direction here set to column, that makes the main axis, so I'll just rename this to main axis, to be vertical down the column. And the opposite of that is the cross axis. So this is the cross axis here. So if we want these two buttons here to stretch the full width of the page, we're really asking it to stretch these buttons the full width along the cross axis. So with our parents selected, we can come down to here, align cross axis, and we have this option here, stretch. So now if we click that, they stretch along the cross axis. And the final thing that we need to do is add some space between them. And to do that, we're going to use row gap, but I want to explain why we're using row gap here and not column gap. So if we come back here to the desktop, the parent again, I know I keep saying this so many times in this video, uh, but it really is important to explain these things. The parent here with flex direction is set to row, sits the children along the row because the main axis is going along here but the children themselves are actually columns within that row. And so that's why here at our uh, desktop breakpoint, we set a column gap again, because the children are columns within the parent that is a row. But once we get down to the smaller breakpoint, we've reversed that. We've set the parent to have a flex direction of column. And by doing that, the items inside there are running down the column, but these items are now actually rows and the rows are sat on top of each other. And that's why we come down here to row gap and we could set this to something like two rem and that adds two rem of spacing between the children. Again, cause their rows within the column. 
So that wraps up the most complex explanation into how to sit two buttons next to each other. Uh, but I think understanding these things in greater detail, sometimes it, it just, I find it fun. I don't know about you, but I, I want to know more about these things in depth. And I hope you do too. If you made it this far and you didn't click out when I gave you the chance after I showed you actually how to do this by clicking a couple of buttons, then you probably fall in the same bucket as me. If you want to continue learning, I'm definitely recommending these two videos that are on the screen right now, especially this one here, because that's the one that YouTube thinks that you're going to find the most relevant. So click on that one or this one. I'll see you in one of those videos. Bye.